Trust me, kilts. Me money bin alarm. Quick, Duckworth, get the limo. I shall, uh, <clears throat> get out in gear, sir. Hurry, Duckworth, hurry! The pedal is to the metal, Mr. McDuck. Ugh, not the Beagle Boys again. If they think they can stand between Scrooge McDuck and his three cubic acres of cash, they've got another thing coming. I'll save you. Uh, Mama, be so proud. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Now that's what I call a stomachache. You were hit on the head, you moronic marauder. Thanks, Uncle Scrooge. You're welcome, lad. But Huey, what are you doing here? Well, we saw the Beagle Boys going into the money bin. We? Oui? Sure. Louie and Dewey are here, too. You better hurry, Uncle Scrooge. He might be in trouble. away from him, you gluttonous goon. Sorry, Scroogey. Not a chance. Mm. You saved me, Uncle Scrooge. I did. How you hurt, lad? Now, I'm fine, but I saw Louie heading up the stairs with about a thousand beagle boys right behind him. Stay here. I'll handle this. Oh, 
Have you afraid a jiffy? Not so fast, big jump. We're running things around here now. Cuss me, jump. One false move and I'm a roast duck. Leave me a good scrooge. It's not worth it. Nonsense, my boy. You'll never beat us, Scrooge. Hey, when I get the gold. I'm gonna buy Ma a new cow! Woohoo! We almost got them all! A fat lot of good that will do us if they make it to me vault. Get away from me, Fortune, you crook. Uh, 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 not this time, McDuck. Oh, you ain't getting the drop on this big old boy. That ain't gonna hide me that way. I'm gonna get you. Oh, dear. Do be careful or you'll scuff the floor. Safe is securely suspended, son. Why did they get rich by being foolish? That's smart! There you are, sir. Curse you, my duck! This ain't the last you'll see of me! Yeah, good riddance to bad beagles, I say. Now, why in the world was he interested in this old painting? Surely there are more valuable... Well, pluck me pin feathers. It looks like some kind of secret code. Boys! Boys! What did you find, Uncle Scrooge? Yeah, what is it? I'm not sure, but I know how to find it out. I'll feed it into my supercomputer and use Gyro's new crypto analysis program. Then we'll know what the Beagle Boys were after. <laughs> Stand back, lads. Brickadoon! What is it, Uncle Scrooge? It's a treasure map, lads. And no ordinary treasure by the look of things. Only Uncle Scrooge would call any kind of treasure ordinary. Look! One of the treasures is in the middle of the Amazon. And there's another one in Transylvania. And one buried ten miles underground. Hey, wait a minute. Something screwy. This last treasure can't be right. Yeah, there's no mountain on Earth that's that high. Well, according to the Junior Woodchuck's guidebook, to get there we'd have to take about 537 million steps straight up till we reach the moon. You mean the moon moon? It looks that way, lads. <laughs> well, what are we waiting for? That treasure's not going to discover itself.
launch pad on the horn. I'm headed to the Amazon jungle to find the scepter of the Incan king. Thanks for the lift, launch pad. No problemo. Lift is one of my favorite principles of aerodynamics. Oh, say, you got your radio, Mr. McD? Hey, of course I do. Great! Then I'll be your eyes in the sky. Oh, I'd be happy if you just keep your eyes on the sky for once. What an airhead. Hey, I heard that. Now then, ancient Incan legends claim the King's Scepter was locked away in a giant temple of the clouds, and it should be dead ahead. Gee, Mr. McD, I see a lot of clouds, but no temple. You wouldn't launch, bud. The legend says the temple was hidden away from all but King Manco Capquac himself. But there's bound to be a way to reveal it buried somewhere in this overgrown salad bowl. And I'm not leaving till I find it. Launchpad, I found an ancient coin depicting a nightingale. Eat oh. You haven't stumbled across a pizza joint down there, have you, Mr. McD? I'm getting kind of hungry up here. Uh, I'm not even going to dignify that question with a response. Oh, yeah, look at the size of this diamond. <laughs> Coin. And this one has an inscription of an eagle. Aha! A coin bearing the image of the Queen's horse. Ha! It'll help us find the treasure for sure. How can you tell, boss? Never doubt the well-honed instincts of an experienced treasure hunter. If you say so, Mr. McD. Gem like this before. A coin showing the sun. Gads, I nearly tripped over it. This place is a mess. Where's Mrs. Beakley when you need her? Hey, watch it! Look at this, an ancient coin with the image of a scythe. It must represent a good harvest. This is Launchpad, calling Mr. McD. What is it, Launchpad? I'm running a little low on fuel up here. Well, where are the extra fuel canisters? <laughs> well, that's why I'm calling you, boss. I checked the glove compartment, but all I found was gloves. Oh. You'd best find those fuel canisters, or the next thing you'll be flying is a model airplane. Okay, okay. Last time I 
ask you for help. Is that a promise? Another one, and it depicts the ruling might of a spear. This is Launchpad, Mr. McDean. Come in, Mr. Mc... Launchpad, what was that? Uh, uh, nothing, boss. I'm sure nobody was using that tree anyway. Uh, except maybe them. Look at this one. It shows a shield. You know, I bet those Incans could have minted a whole lot more coins if they hadn't tried to make each one unique. There's an image of the scales of justice. Just what I need to help me find the scepter. Hello, Mr. McGee. I had a thought. Launchpad, why start now and spoil a perfect record? That's a good question. Well, I don't have all day. What was your thought? Come to think of it, uh, I forgot. <laughs> Launchpad, were you dropped on your head much as a child? Come in, Launchpad. I found something. There's a carving of Manco Capquack on this stone slab, and there's eight circular notches around it. Sounds great. Does it tell us how to find the treasure? Well, I'm not sure what it tells us, but I'm certain it's an important clue. Bless me, bagpipes. These coins I found will fit perfectly into those notches. Ah, oh, you must have come across an ancient Incan poker table, Mr. McDee. You come down here and I'll deal you a blow to the head. You're supposed to be keeping an eye out for trouble, remember? <laughs> All right. Trouble spotting it is. Launchpad, what if the images on these coins symbolize the various tribes of Manco Capquack's empire? Maybe if I surround him with them. Ugh, oh, no. It's not working. you look at that? The ancient city of Manco Capquack. And that beam of light. It must be pointing to the Temple of the Clouds. But how am I going to get across? Up here, Mr. McDee. Follow that beam of light. I found a legendary temple of Manco Capquack. With a little help from your old pal, Launchpad McQuack. Oh, <laughs> oh, of course, Launchpad. I couldn't have done it without you. Now just hold on, and with a little luck, that scepter will be mine in no time. Gem like 
Festival. Mrs. Bickley, what are you doing here? Why, I'm seeing that you get a proper meal, Mr. McDuck. You're always as good as you want, my dear. I've been foolish. There it is, the King's Scepter. Well, <laughs> oh, this was easier to find than a penny in a parking lot. Catch me, kilts. What was that?
Sorry, Mr. McTee. This place has fallen to pieces. No, I'm not leaving without that scepter. Get us out of here, Launchpad. I can't believe we came all this way for nothing. What's the meaning of this? Outsider, our prophecies have long foretold that our ancient city would one day be returned to us. For hundreds of years we have waited, and at last that day has come. You mean you're not mad at me? Mad? Quite the contrary, feathered one. Is there anything we can do to repay you? Well, now that you mention it, uh, I did come here looking for an ancient scepter. I didn't suppose... Does it look like this? It fell from the temple. Oh, they're climbing for nothing, eh, Mr. McDee? Bless me, bagpipes, the scepter of the Incan king! It is yours. Take it and go in peace. After all, it was just the old king's back scratcher. of the Incan King. I tell you, boys, there's something special about this treasure. Really, Uncle Scrooge? Yeah, it just looks like an old back scratcher to us. <laughs> <laughs> you boys need to learn some respect for the finer things in life. Now, if you're done having fun at your old uncle's expense, help me decide where we should go next. Pack your bags, boys. We're off to Transylvania, and we're no coming back without the coin of the Lost Realm. This is it, kids. Draculesti Manor. Home of the legendary Drake Von Vladstone. Heir to the coin of the Lost Realm. Boy, it's kind of creepy out here, isn't it? Uh, uh, Uncle Scrooge, we're not going to break into this guy's house, are we? Of course not, Louis. This castle has been abandoned for centuries. Hey, look at this. The Junior Woodchuck Guidebook says Drake von Gladstone was best known by his nickname, Count Dracula Duck. <sighs> Is there really a monster in there, Uncle Scrooge? Ah, uh, don't be silly, Webby. Yeah, there's no such thing as Dracula. Right! Ah, uh, he is right, isn't he, Uncle Scrooge? Ah, of course he is, Louis. Vampires, banshees, and mischievous spirits are just a lot of superstitious hocus-pocus. <laughs> but you better stick close to me, just in case. Boys, stay put and keep an eye on Wee Webigail. I'll be back with the treasure in no time. Aw, oh, nuts. We want to come with you, Uncle Scrooge. Don't worry. I'll be back with the coin before you can say E Pluribus Unum. E Purple Bus Huum? Yeah, I'm not sure that's as fast as you think it is. Besides, why should we have to stay here just because Webby's a big chicken? Yeah, we're not afraid of. Oh, whatever's hiding out there, uh, are we? 
You boys are so mean. I'll show you who's not afraid of the dark. Wait, Oh, no! Huey! Dewey! Louie! Will they be all right, Uncle Scrooge? Of course. Everything will be fine, my darling. Wait here, and I'll be back with the lads lickety-split. to beat me to my treasure, no doubt. But it'll take more than just an old bed sheet and flower dust to frighten off Scrooge McDuck. Look, Uncle Scrooge, that beagle boy dropped something. It's an old piece of paper. Twist me, Tartan. It's an ancient rune. You mean, like a magic spell? Aye, lad. At least part of one. Gee, I wonder who tore it into pieces. We'll worry about that later. Right now, I want you to head to the front door and wait for me. I'll be back once I've found the treasure. Off you go, lad. starting to look at me like I was lunch. Well, next time he'll think twice before scrapping with Scrooge McDuck. Speaking of scraps, he dropped this up at Scrooge. Ah, it looks like another piece of that torn up sorcery. Ah, uh, say what? A magic spell, and it's nearly complete. Just one piece left to find. 
If only I knew where to start looking. Well, that bungle boy did say this house has an illusion wall. Uh, do you think he meant... Of course, a secret passage. Oh, no wonder I've been having so much trouble finding anything around here. Good lad. Now, off you go. I need you to wait at the entrance with the others. I've never seen a gem like this before. That's a tough without your army helmet, eh? <laughs> Wait till the gang in Sing Sing finds out you were knocked flat by an old guy in his cane. <laughs> uh, thank you, lad. Yeah? Well, you better be careful where you go poking around, McDuck, or you's gonna have much bigger problems than me. So long! Now, what do you suppose he meant by that? Ah, oh, it doesn't matter. Uh, quick, lad, see if there's a scrap of paper lying about. Uh, you mean like this one, Uncle Scrooge? Exactly. This is the last piece of the riddle. But what to do? That's what I'm about to find out. Quick, lad, go meet Webby and the others at the entrance. And all of you, stay put. It's madness. Oh, nearly lost my hat on that one. Nearly lost my hat on that one. This is actually starting to be fun. Mr. Bigley, now where did you come from? Why, from home, of course. I had to be sure you were all right in this filthy place. You're worth your weight in gold, Mrs. Bigley. Uh, if you'll pardon the expression. Huh. Of course. But I'll find my own way out, thank you very much. Oh, I've 
never seen a gem like this before. Onward and upward. Now that's what I call a ruby. Gem like this before. It's a diamond the size of uh, 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 Mrs. Weekly. Watch this. Part of the spell matches the inscriptions on this mirror. Luck of the ducks! I solved the riddle! Uh, what riddle, Uncle like Scrooge? Boys, I thought I told you to stay with Webby. They did stay with me, Uncle Scrooge. I'm right here. Oh, what a pretty mirror. Aye, lass. And if I'm right, using this spell will reveal the foul perpetrator behind all these shenanigans. <laughs> Magic at the spell. Ach, I should have known you'd be behind this. Oh, Scroogey, my old friend. You wouldn't believe how much fun it is watching you run around making a fool of yourself. What? <laughs> oh, you really don't think you need ancient sorcery to find Coin of Lost Realm, do you? No. I had Beetle Boy's hide paper scraps to throw you off trail. Why, you sneaky, conniving... Please, save compliments for garden party. What garden party? The one I will throw in celebration when I get home with Lost Coin. So long, fools! <laughs> Gee, she is very nice. You said it, Webby. All right, you kids stay here. I'm going to track down that witch and give her a piece of my mind. Why must you always meddle? That coin is mine!
Inferior mirror and beam spells. It's the last time I shopped for spell ingredients at this count store. You haven't seen lots of magic of the spell. You may have coin of lost realm, but your number one dime will soon be mine. It's hard to say, lad. Folks like her have a way of popping up at the most inconvenient moments. Well, when it comes to Magicka, there's no such thing as a convenient moment. Too true, Louie. Now then, where to next, lads? Find Gyro. Our next stop's Africa and the center of the Earth. What treasure do you think you'll find there, Uncle Scrooge? Only the largest gem known to history, the giant diamond of the inner Earth. Hi, lads. This is the place. I can feel all those diamonds singing to me. <laughs> and it's a right pretty song, too. Gyro, I thought you said this winch was brand new. It was. It's an unbreakable diamond tether, Mr. McDuck. I made it myself. So long as you didn't use any of my diamonds to do the job. <laughs> What's all this hullabaloo? Your lunch break isn't for two hours yet. We heard voices down there, Mr. McDuck. Strange, g g ghostly voices. Nonsense. There aren't any v v v voices down there. <laughs> Whatever you say, Mr. McDuck. But your mine is haunted. You finish digging it. Oh, you want anything done, you've got to do it yourself. And believe me, if I hear voices down there, I'll give them a good talking to. Now, you stay here, boys. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. The rock bottom, Mr. McDuck. This mine shaft goes down for miles. I hear one more word about this mine being haunted, I'll start haunting it myself. Ooh, 
I'm telling you kids for the last time, there are no ghosts in this mine. I don't know about that, Uncle Scrooge. Something must have cut the tether line, and broke the winch, and scared away those workers. I'll tell you what scared them away. Overactive imaginations. I'm not about to let a bunch of silly superstitions stand between me and the giant diamond of the inner earth. Now, man the controls and load away, lads! I've still got it. Why are you here, Mrs. Beakley? The center of the earth is quite toasty, Mr. McDuck. I wanted to make sure you dressed in layers. You're worth your weight in gold, Mrs. Bickley. Uh, if you'll pardon the expression. I hope you're taking care of the boys, Mr. McDuck. They're always finding their way into mischief. Number one, my back and doom.
Be fun. Ooh. Is there no end to this amount? Where's the break? Now, what in the world do you suppose those are? No tell you to stay with Gyro. Well, we are uh, uh... Oh, I'm disappointed in you lads. It's dangerous doing here. Uh we just wanted to help Uncle Scrooge. Yeah. <laughs> Hush lads. Did you hear that? What a booty! Those must be the voices that miner was talking about. You boys go back the way you came. This is no place for children. I didn't get to be number one by back and doom. What's the meaning of all this racket? Out of the way, stranger. As the king of the Terraformians, I forbid anyone to interfere with the great games. Great games? Stand back. You'll interfere with the role. Ooh, 
strange creature, you are disqualified. Yes, you're disqualified for unsportsmanlike conduct and roll and crash interference. Now, see here, I own this mine, and I won't be bossed around by an overblown fuzzball. Step aside, I've got work to do. Oh, so you're the one causing all the ruckus up above. Well, I have heard enough. Rich by being foolish. can hold up under your assault no longer, stranger. What is it you wish from us? Well, for starters, stop these infernal games. You're causing earthquakes, scaring off my workers, and ruining my equipment. It's now impossible to mine for diamonds. Diamonds? Aye, diamonds. Like this one, though the particular one I'm after is a fair bit bigger. Oh, you refer to garbage rocks. We have no use for garbage rocks. They're hard and sharp, and you can't roll on them at all. You don't say. <laughs> uh, uh, tell you what, uh, I'll do you a favor and haul away your uh, uh, garbage rocks free of charge. Just keep the earthquakes to a minimum, all right? Agreed. I am proud to announce that the Terraformians hereby welcome your garbage rock mining operation. Uh, here, you start by getting rid of this one. Bless me, bagpipes. The giant diamond of the inner elf. That's right, Louis. It's as I told you, boys. There's a rational explanation for everything. Yeah, a whole kingdom of underground creatures who cause earthquakes as part of a game is a completely rational explanation. Uh, I... Never mind, boys. The point is, we made it back with the giant diamond of the inner earth and gained an entire diamond mine in the process. Now, where to next, lads? Pack my parka, Duckworth. We're headed for the Himalayas to hunt for the lost crown of Genghis Khan. Shall I forward your call, sir? Gee, can I come, Uncle Scrooge? I want to see the pretty Himalayan marmots. Oh, not this time, Whippy, darling. I need you here looking after the boys. Otherwise, who knows what kind of trouble they might get into. Oh, that's very smart. Uncle Scrooge! Indulge me, lads. 
The last thing this expedition needs is a wee lass about. Ugh, I'm going to have enough trouble looking after the launch pad. Launch pad. I told you to land in the center of the mountain range, not in the center of a mountain. Gee, Mr. McDee, I thought that crash was rock solid. The only rocks around here are the ones inside your head. Ugh, we're nowhere near Shadow Pass and the Lost Crown. Now fix this wreck so we can get airborne and step on it, lad. I'm paying you by the hour, and I'll may have you billing me for overtime. No problem, boss. As long as I have this fuel regulator, we're as good as... Whoopsie-daisy. Oops. <laughs> Uh, my mom always said I was a Butterfingers. <laughs> oh, no. Please tell me you've got another one of those. Sure I do. <laughs> but it's back in Duckburg. Launch pad! Don't worry, Mr. McDee. I'll climb down and get it. You'll do no such thing. I'll get it. You stay here and try not to cause any more damage. Okay. You're the boss. Here now, don't touch that. I need it to fix my plane. Stop! Oh, it's too late. Those bunny bandits have torn it apart. I've got to find those pieces fast. <laughs> now to find the other two pieces. A duck. Looks like that poor little pea brain got caught in a deep freeze. Wow, 
what happened? Scrooge? Ooga, ooga! Scrooge saved Baba! There, there, little fella. Uncle Scrooge is here to help. Scrooge saved Baba! Scrooge saved Baba! Scrooge saved Baba! Baba helps Scrooge. Baba helps Scrooge forever. You know, I could use a bit of help smashing away this giant icebox. What do you say, Bubba? Ooga, ooga! In that case, follow me, lad! This is the end of the line, Bubba. It's time for you to head to the surface. Bubba home with Scrooge? Aye. Launch pad is waiting to take you home to Duckburg. On your way now. It's the second piece of the fuel regulator. One more piece to find and we can get out of this overgrown ice box. of the ducks, the last one. Now to get this fuel regulator back to launch pad. Why are you here, Mrs. Beakley? Because you're freezing, Mr. McDuck. This will keep your insides warm and toasty. Oh, thank you kindly, dear. I'll see myself out, Mr. McDuck. Don't you worry about a thing. Gem like this before.
Here you go, launch pad. Good as new. Now get this bucket of bolts back in the sky. Just a tick, Mr. McD. Uh, this uh, order. Do it. Now there's your problem. Webbergill, what in the world are you doing here? I wanted to see the pretty crown of the Scrooge. Oh, great. Now I've got to babysit you and launch pad. We're ready for liftoff, Mr. McD. Ah, not a moment too soon. Strap in tight, Webby dear. Off we go. Nothing but blue skies ahead. Clear as a bell. Not a cloud in sight. Launch pad. Knock off that infernal chatter. Gee whiz. I was only trying to lighten the mood. If anything, we need to lighten the plane. Feels like she's lost maneuverability with all the, uh... Unexpected cargo we seem to have picked up. No worries, Mr. McD. I've got the coordinates for Shadow Pass locked in. We'll be there lickety-split. More like lickety-splat. Glomgold. Nice to see you, McDuck. Especially since you've led me right to the treasure. To whom do I owe my thanks? Your idiotic pilot. Or did you play it safe and let those two wee ones fly the plane? You dusty cheat. Only you could sink so low. And at 15,000 feet, no less. Complain all you like. The lost crown of Genghis Khan will look right at home on my feathered noggin. Wouldn't you say, Scroogey? <laughs> That's what you think. You'll never beat us to Shadow Pass. So, the crown is in Shadow Pass, eh? Thanks for telling me. <laughs> Launch pad. Come on, boys. One old duck with a cane shouldn't be any trouble to take down. Wow. Usually for a ride like this, you have to buy a ticket. Here comes a ten megaton finder's fee, McDuck. Turn a profit on this, McDuck. The other way around, and I couldn't agree more, Webby. Pickle me, pin feathers. There it is. Shadow passed directly ahead. Take us down, launch pad. Slow and steady this time. No problem, old Mr. McD. We're close to that treasure now. I can almost smell it. <laughs> Wasn't me. <laughs> That definitely wasn't me. Whatever it is, it won't last long if it tries to get between me and the lost crown. Uncle Scrooge, don't go. Do not worry, lassie. Whatever is in that cave is no match for your Uncle Scrooge. I earn my fortune by being smarter than the smarties and tougher than the toughies. If anything's in there, it had better step aside. But I'm scared. 
Stay with Launchpad. He'll take good care of you. Stay with Launchpad? Gee, now I'm extra scared. Glass. This monster tried to pummel me. Why, I nearly cashed my last check. Oh, I know, ma'am. But Uncle Scrooge is really nice once you get to know him. Webby, you understand this creature? Of course, Uncle Scrooge. It's all in the Junior Woodchuck Guidebook. What's she saying now? She says she's sorry if she hurt you. She's just upset because she stepped on a thorn and can't get it out. A thorn? You don't suppose? Here's your thorn, Webigail. <laughs> the lost crown of Genghis Khan. The pretty crown. <laughs> you found it. Hey, the poor creature was standing on it. Webby, I cannot thank you enough. I hope you can find it in your heart to forgive me. Without your help, we never would have found the treasure. Oh, uh, and thanks to you too, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> I think she likes you, Uncle Scrooge. Yeah, that's odd. Usually it's me the ladies go gaga for. Hey, uh, well, let's get home before she grows any fonder of me.
the last crown of Genghis Khan is mine, lads. <laughs> All it took was a bit of tenacity and perseverance. And a little kindness and patience. Right, Uncle Scrooge? Right you are, Webby darling. Now, where's Bubba run off to? Yeah, where is he? He was here a minute ago. Why does no answer Bubba? He's over there having a tea party with Webby's toys. No, Bubba Smash! Uh-oh, Webby. Sounds like Bubba's not getting along so good with your Quacky Patch dolls. <gasps> you keep away from my dolls, mister! Uh, remember, kindness and patience, Webby Gale. Set a good example for the lad. Well then, what treasure shall we look for next? It's a long way to the moon, lads. But the green cheese of longevity will make it worth the trip. Up, up, and away! <laughs> Mr. McDuck, mm, I've never been to the moon before. <laughs> well, when it comes to space cadets, Fenton, you're a natural. <laughs> now, Gyro, why in blazes are we chewing this awful blue muck? <laughs> why, that's Oxy Chew, Mr. McDuck. It's my latest invention, oxygen flavored taffy. Five good chews, and you can breathe on the lunar surface without a spacesuit. Oh, and it tastes great, too. That gyro is a matter of opinion. Yeah. Now, which way to the green cheese? What do you mean? Isn't it all around us? Yeah? How do you figure? Everybody knows the whole moon's made of green cheese. Well, that's what my dear mama said. And did it take a feather brain like you to believe her? Ugh, sometimes I don't know what I'm gonna... Wait, what's that? Look, here's someone who can give us directions. Hello? Ah, Mr. McDuck! Help! Oh no! We've got to save him! Do we really? We do if you want to find that treasure of yours, Mr. McDuck. Fenton was carrying the Gizmo Duck suit. That's the only thing we've got powerful enough to break into the moon vault. All right, fine. Stay here and guard the supplies while I look for that bumbling bookkeeper. like the same spaceship that took off with Fenton. Well, <laughs> I guess this means I'm invited on board.
Denton, get down from there and stop embarrassing yourself. Mr. McDuck! Thank goodness you're here! I think those aliens wanted to suck out my brain and make an army of Denton clones! Bah, they'd soon learn that one of you is one too many. Now, help me find a security override so we can get to your gizmo ducks. You mean this? Security system disengaged. Fenton, you're a genius! Gee, Mr. McDuck, do you mean it? Oops. Warning, damage report. Artificial gravity system is offline. Fenton, you're a nincompoop. You broke the gravity controls. Not to worry. I'll have it fixed in a gimme. I got a level 3 certificate of technology from Happy Ducky University, you know. Oh, no you don't. You'll probably slam into the self-destruct button, too. I'll get us out of this. Gravity system restored. All systems normal. Nice work, Mr. McDuck. Now, let's go get my Gizmo Duck suit. Not so fast, Dunderhead. You go away with Gyro. I'll find a Gizmo Duck suit myself. I found Gizmo Duck's arm and suit. It's a good thing Gyro rigged up this hyperspace pocket for me to carry things around in. Now, only two more parts to find, and we can break into that moon vault.
Still, I'm always wondering what Gyro was thinking when he designed this thing. Who fights crime with a unicycle? Now, just one more fact to find, and I can get off this flying monstrosity. Managed to find all of Gizmo Duck's suit. <laughs> oh boy! Now we could blast into the treasure vault. Just a moment, Fenton. <clears throat> Gyro, I, uh, I think I left my favorite two-dollar bill under the back seat. <laughs> Would you mind getting it for me? Sure thing, Mr. McDuck. Gee, boss, why'd you send Gyro back onto the ship? So he doesn't find out you're Gizmo Duck when you put on that suit, you dunderhead. But there are only three of us here, sir. Won't he figure it out anyway when Gizmo Duck appears and I've mysteriously vanished? I wouldn't he worry about that. Gyro may be a brilliant inventor, but his deductive reasoning skills are about as good as yours. Oh! Hey! Would you just get on with it? Say your secret code word and activate that confounded contraption. Code word? Gee, I can't remember it. Oh, blather and blather, Skite, I'm useless. I mean, I'm useful to the extreme. Point me toward the offending blockade so that I might deal justice upon it. Cut the dramatics, would you, and follow me. Mr. McDuck? Fenton? Gizmo Duck? Huh? They're gone, and all I could find was this two million dollar bill. Oh well, back under the seat it goes.
this is the place. Gyro's calculation said the green cheese of longevity lies just beyond this door. Step aside, citizen, whilst I blast the door asunder. How was that, Mr. Mc... I mean, well, the path is clear, good sir. Good work, Gizmoduck. No? Ah! Flinthead Glumgold. What are you doing here, you pernicious pilferer? Why, same as you, Scroogey. Trying to corner a new segment of the dairy market. <laughs> Why, you... How did you find out about the green cheese? Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> Well, thanks for saving me the trouble of blasting through that door on my own. I'll stop him, Mr. McGuck! Halt, evildoer! No, Gizmoduck. I need you to help me deal with the... Uh... Beagle Boys. Bah! Mary, I made it here first. No, not the cheese. Anything but that. Great Scott. I thought that stuff was supposed to be an anti-aging culture, not an instant growth fungus.
giant moon rat or no giant moon rat. Nothing's going to keep this duck from that green cheese and all the green it's going to make me. Boys, all five treasures are mine. <laughs> uh, boys? <gasps> Sorry, McDuck, but your meddlesome nephews are a wee bit tied up at the moment. Flint Heart Glomgold, you put the Beagle Boys up to this. Guilty as charged, Scroogey. I've been the world's second richest duck long enough. But these treasures will soon change that. <laughs> oh, tell your goons to release my boys. Not till you fork over that last treasure. Don't do it, Uncle Scrooge. Don't do it. The way I see it, MacDuck, you're not in much of a position to argue. Yeah, hi. You drive a hard bargain, Glumgold. Take it, you filthy cheat. <laughs> Flintheart Glumgold, the richest duck in the world. How does it feel to be number two, Scroogey? <laughs> Magic or dispel? Oh, <laughs> it's so rude of me to drop in unannounced. What are you doing here, Magica? Oh, quick, somebody sound the alarm. Duckworth, Mrs. Beagley, call the Pentagon. Sell me stock and bonds. Not so fast, fools. Like a Rudy, Uncle Scrooge, I can't move. Me neither. Now I know how a statue feels. Eh, greedy old fools. These treasures are far more valuable than money. And just what do you mean by that? You find secrets hidden inside old painting, yes? Painting of Drake von Bloodstone, also known as Count Dracula Duck. These treasures are part of spell to summon him. Bah, what rubbish. You will see. With power of Dracula Duck, under my command, I will rule the world. Unless, oh, uh, you'd rather surrender number one dime, Scrooge. Dying is much gentler way to conquer world. Will save me great deal of trouble. Also, less risk of accidental Dracula bite. The first dime I ever made? Never. Then I will take precious nephews instead. You will bring me dime quickly enough after that. Hey, Dims is our hostages. Find your own. Quiet, Piggle Boys. <laughs> <laughs> now I take leave. Bring number one dime to my home and mount Vesuvius in 24 hours, or little nephews will become Snackula for Dracula. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear, sometimes I still get carried away. That lousy, no good so and so. I stole those treasures fair and square. This is no time for belly aching, Domgold. I've got to save those boys. Ha, forget it. That she devil's long gone. You can't catch her now. Maybe you're right, Flinty. Ah, oh, that leaves me no choice. How about a deal? You help me get the boys back, and you can keep the five treasures. Ha! <laughs> Without your dime, I'll become the richest duck in the world, and you'll be nothing but a shriveled up old has-been. <laughs> that dime's not worth ten cents next to the safety of my boys. 
Do we have an agreement? Are you joshing? It's a deal. You know what I think, McDuck? I think you've gone soft. You've let those pesky rugrats become a business liability. And I'm going to be the richer for it. Oh, go soak your head. Now remember our deal, Flinty. Help me rescue the lads, and the treasure is yours. You keep up your end, and I'll keep up mine. for me money bin. Road. Time is money. It could be dangerous, McDuck. You go first. How oh, dare you! as I can. Like you are. Quit complaining. There's a treasure nearby. Hot and snow. It's a diamond the size of the, 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 the Mrs. Beakley. Is there no end to this madness? Before beauty, plenty.
go. I'm a busy duck. Washed up has beans first, McDuck. <sighs> uh, it has took you long enough to catch up. What's the matter? Gold bricks in your caboose? Oh, shut your beak. You're not getting any younger yourself, you old windbag. Hush! Magica may not know we're here yet. We don't want to lose the element of surprise. So... You have decided to deliver dime, after all. <laughs> Release my nephews, you evil enchantress! Oh, not until you show me number one dime. Here it is. Now, let the boys... What? It's been great doing business with you, Scroogey! <laughs> you too! <laughs> You've been in cahoots from the beginning! No, even before beginning! Do you remember who sold you Penty in first place? Twas me in disguise, you fool! Why, you... No wonder it was such a bargain! Five dollar painting for you saved expensive treasure hunting expedition for me! And now, at long last, I am ready to use treasures to complete spells. Enough with the smoke and mirrors routine. You've got my dime. Now release the lads. Oh, boo-hoo. No time for buyer's remorse from old handmen. Better to stick with master plan. It's much more exciting. I now summon Dracula Duck. Behold! Dracula Duck, I, Magic of the Spell, have summoned you to do my bidding. You must obey my will and mine alone. <laughs> and my will is that you destroy this meddling old fool. Let Scrooge beat you!
Oh, boys. I'm so glad you're all right. We knew you'd save us, Uncle yeah, Scrooge. we knew yep, you would. we sure did. Down that hall, lads. Launch pad will be waiting to take you to safety. What about you, Uncle Scrooge? Yeah, the whole place is falling apart. Magic and Glumgold still have my number one dime, and I'm not leaving without it. You boys get going. Good luck, Uncle Scrooge! Now, give me dime. Not till you give me those treasures. I want to be filthy, stinking rich. You already are filthy, stinking rich. But not as rich as that Chiseler McDuck. Where's the treasure? No more horseplay. I need that dime. Oh, no, you don't, Missy. Ah, let go, you fool. Not till I get that treasure. Try, Magica, but I'll be taking my dime with me back to Duckburg. <laughs> Have a lovely time together. Um. Number one dime. Return safe and sound. But Uncle Scrooge, well, what about the treasure? Yeah, we had it and we lost it. Sorry, Uncle Scrooge. Come on now, boys. We may not have got to keep the treasure, but we had the adventure of a lifetime. And best of all, we got to share it together. You, Webigale, Launchpad. And Epworth, too. Don't forget about Mrs. Beakley and Bubba. And Fenton! And Shiro! They helped us, too! <laughs> Indeed they did, lads. Now, come on. Let's head for home. Let go of me, you doddering old deadweight! Oh, pipe down, you mangy bird! It was real swell of you to give Glamgold a lift home, Mr. McDee. <laughs> Aye. Uh, I'll put it on your bill, Flinty. You can pay me back in, oh, say, three to five years. <laughs> With interest, of course. I'll get you for this, McDuck. Mark my words. <sighs> now, there's a sight I never got tired of. Come on, lads. Let's head to the ice cream shop. Oh, wow. <laughs> hey, can we each get our own cone this time, Uncle Scrooge? Oh, why not? I'm in a generous mood today. In fact, each of you can even get a cone with ice cream in it. <laughs> <laughs> 